In a remote jungle paradise, there is a tendency to lean back, chill out. If you don't keep moving, the wonders of this place will pass you by. In Pinas Bay, Panama, everything is on the move, so relax at your own risk. It's been three hours since the 737 departed the States. Farther and farther from home, but closer and closer to fishing nirvana. The final destination, a place where nature reigns and humans are the invasive species. That's why it takes so many modes of transportation to get here. Airliners, shuttles, prop planes, pangas, but don't stop, keep moving. The payoff is Tropic Star Lodge. On the edge of the Darien rainforest, with the Colombian border within earshot, Tropic Star Lodge faces Pinas Bay on Panama's Pacific coast. Pinas Bay doesn't have a wild side. Every side is wild. Birds, monkeys, rays, waterfalls, mountain tops protruding out of the ocean. One of the rarest species on Earth is Richard White. <laughs> the charismatic South African captain has been Tropic Star's fishing director for four years. Tropic Star Lodge is known as a marlin lodge, and it is. We do great with the marlin. But everyone knows we get the rooster fish as well, but there's an entire array of other fish that are out there that people don't target. Sailfish, the bluefin trevally. We always have tuna all year round. You can get them at the rocks, you can get them out deep. They come in all sizes from 10 pounds to 300 pounds. So you never know what you're gonna get. And this time of year, it's a tough bite, but it's a fun bite. It's inshore. And on a really good week, you can get up to 14, 15 different species just fishing the rocks. Most fishing destinations are known for two or three species, not here. In Pinas Bay, your bucket list is their backyard. Sun's coming up coffee in the belly, high fives and smiles. It's time to head to the rocks, a water world. But Richard isn't phased with the challenges ahead. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to try and keep it vertical while you're jigging. Get jiggy with the na 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 na.
In late May, Pinas Bay, Panama is prime time for inshore fishing. It's off to the rocks, the craggy shoreline, steep islands dotted with vegetation, a mix of still beauty and natural violence. The whole area feels fantastical. and the land matches the residence below, a mix of colors and shapes. If you enjoy inshore fishing and you've got some species to knock off your bucket list, some of these inshore species, they're a lot of fun. It's more hands-on than the marlin fishing. It's not just the trolling. You get to throw the poppers as well. You get to go jigging. You get to troll rapalas. It's, it's changing it up all the time. Before hitting the rocks, let's review the checklist. From rough weather to sunny skies, Yeti wrangles up the gear for any setup or situation. A polarized view with Costa sunglasses is a must, made tough and durable while cutting haze and blur for greater clarity on the water. With potential big battles about to happen, Penn has the best in heavy tackle for offshore success. Simrad's handheld VHF radio has integrated GPS, crisp audio, and features like plotting and navigation modes. King Sailfish release mounts provide a picture, and KSM will create a beautiful mount that matches your catch down to the smallest detail. There's a myriad of different species. I mean, we have a lot of different snappers here. The barred pargo, or rock snapper, an uncommon species. The Eastern Pacific, from Baja to Panama, their only home. Locals say it's the worst tasting fish around. Little is known about them. Just by catching one, you may be able to add something new to their story. Slow trolling, live bait, and jigging poppers attracts bluefin trevally. Definitely no meat fish, but makes for pretty footage. Bright blue and turquoise stripes and spots accent their back and flanks, the most fashionable of the jack family. But the blue one is undoubtedly the most beautiful, and it's very, very rare to get. Fishing the Pacific, everyone antes up on billfish, but the Calcutta is the rooster fish, the side bet no one wants to lose. Why do so many anglers say, I gotta catch a rooster? Because it's flashy, it's exotic, it's a struggle. The fish is the physical incarnation of adventure. For the people who want more action, I'm not saying a blue marlin is an action, <laughs> but if you want more you on the rod, more casting, more working at it, that inshore stuff, this is the time of year to do it. You can definitely expect to get hooked into some very nice rooster fish. We have a showstopper. That is a nice one. So we have a resident monkey here that was rescued from a local village. 
we're in a love-hate relationship right now, but we're working on it. He's absolutely adorable. I think he adds a fun dynamic to the lodge, running around, swinging from everything he can possibly find. And I'm currently in the process of teaching him manners, even though I don't have my own manners. <laughs> Out in the jungle, deep in the ocean, strange connections can happen. Unpredictable alliances are formed. Partnerships that may once seem random connect many dots. Friendship, quality of life, even survival. At Tropic Star, there are all kinds of relationships, each one connecting to the next. Take, for instance, the local anglers. Tropic Star's captains and mates procure their own bait, but a tiny industry has grown from the demand. Locals and dugout canoes trade bonita and mackerel for cash and beer. And in these conditions, it ain't easy work. Richard does his best imitation of the local way. And victory! When the fishing's done, the captains and mates head home to the Choco Indian Village. Tropic Star is the village's economic bedrock. There's about 1,800 people in the village that we have, and the village is pretty much sustained by our operations here. We employ a large percentage of the people in the village through captains, mates, laundry, gardening, and dining staff. My favorite thing is interacting with all these kids. Their laughing, smiling faces and running up and down with the beach with them is one of my favorite things here at Tropic Star. Tropic Star's success relies on the fishing, and the fishing relies on the interconnectivity of the species. So another great thing is we get them all year round, but it has different seasons, is you're going to find giant pods of porpoise. And they have a symbiotic relationship with the elephant tuna. The elephant tuna scare the baits up from deep below, and the porpoise actually school it together. Then the elephant smash through it, disrupts everything, and the porpoise, as good friends are, they ball it up. So quite often when you're running out there, you're going to see a lot of different porpoise in this area. And when you see them greyhounding in a certain direction, generally they're there, really moving fast to go and get that bait. And this week what we saw is you see the females hitting their tails on the water, males and females, and they're teaching the young how to actually catch the baits. They're stunning baits. And generally I always say to people, if you see that, you know there's yellowfin in the area. It's the captain's job to interpret that instinctual waltz and turn it into fish in the box. Ah, Juno Brutal, the horses go straight damn down. 
Tropic Star's crew is trained on billfish for obvious reasons, but they're happy to indulge a yellowfin frenzy. The tuna put up a solid fight, muscling their way down deep, swimming in circles, but they wear out quick. That's when the mates sweep in. Yeah, nothing like catching yellowfin on the top water. Yeah, baby! set a stopwatch. It's a 20-minute run to reach Zane Gray Reef, a seamount in 350 feet of water, a solid rock hub of predators and prey. It's down there, hidden in all that blue. Getting ready at the Tropic Star Lodge, rods, reels, all the tackle that's needed is like an arsenal. The boat, the tank. Zane Gray Reef, the grounds to put our tactics and tools to the test. Live bonita are bridled and tossed over the transom into the spread. They are the foot soldiers in today's battle. Sailfish feed up top and the show that follows is spectacular. Their brilliant blue dorsals are clearly visible even against the matching Pacific waters. The fish thrash and jump with chaotic zeal, but exhaustion follows. Moments later, the leader is in sight. For a place that seems like it is at the end of the world, Tropic Star Lodge is ahead of the game when it comes to conservation of the area. It was one of the first operations to go entirely to non-offset circle hooks when using live or dead bait. There is also a 20-mile exclusive zone around the lodge where no commercial fishing activity may occur, including longlining, as well as a billfish decree that protects all billfish species from commercial harvest. These stories about the good old days, well, I don't want the good old days to be the same for my kids. With I tell them about all these giant fish and they don't get to catch them. So my whole thing is catch and release. It's about respect. Respect the ocean, respect the fish that we're catching, and have respect for the future generations. The cliché about places like Pinas Bay is that time stands still. You won't find that here. Species migrate. Mates become captains. Interns return to school. Guests come and go. Sure, 
Tropic Star Lodge has provided steady fishing for decades, but don't take it for granted. The wild is under no obligation to follow your rules or vacation schedules. Remember, these fish traveled hundreds of miles before tripping across your bait. Fishing is where natural instinct meets man-made ingenuity, a beautifully manufactured accident. <laughs>